Hi, this is Steve from Pixelboat.com. Recently, I've been working on a show about fishing. Wicked fishing. Wicked fishing. And we had a lot of graphics in that show that needed to explain how a fishing boat worked. That meant a lot of rope rigging. And animating splines by hand to replicate the natural movement of rope can be really time consuming and difficult to set up. And then once a client comes back with timing changes, the number of keyframes you have to then reanimate just makes the whole process really cumbersome. Since the boat would be in every episode that season, and because I didn't want to mess with a lot of point level animation in Cinema 4D, and on top of that, not only myself, but other artists would need to use this setup to create their own shots, I decided to make a boat rig using Dynamics and Expresso. This would give us a lot of nice natural movement with no keyframes, plus a user interface that would make it easy to do changes down the line. So let's take a look at the original boat setup. Here you can see we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different ropes, a school of fish, a boat. We've got a buoy here in the back that if we go ahead and grab it, you go ahead and grab it, you can see it's pulling the rope with it wherever it goes, along with controls for the joining points of the rope, the height of the first squid on the line, as well as a fishing pole, a wench. And if I hit play, you'll see all of this stuff is going to work without any keyframes, giving us a lot of nice natural movement. And here, just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my timeline. And there you can see absolutely no keyframes. There's nothing keyframed in this scene, but the boat is rocking. The lines are all moving. The squid are jumping at the end of the lines. The buoy is moving. Everything is moving just as it would if it were sitting in the ocean. So now I can just come in, create whatever animation they want to show or highlight. And I don't have to worry about the actual scene itself. So how is all this happening? If we come down and take a look at any of the squid lines here, you'll see we have a we have an extruded spline, and that's true for every single rope that you're going to see here. We have a ton of springs, and what the springs are doing is connecting rigid body objects along these lines, so that way they'll bounce and flex just like a rope would. As well as constraint tags, we've got forces that are acting upon all of the ropes themselves with turbulence and wind. And then we've got this giant animation control here, which gives us the ability to make a lot of changes really fast. So if I go ahead, back this up and hit play. Now see how much flex there is in that rope? What if I want a little more flex in it? Or maybe less? Well, I can do all of the ropes in one quick slider movement here without having to dig down into any of my grouping. I can change how much the pole at the top is bending and you can see that rope is going to update automatically. I can change how much this winch here bends and again the rope will update itself automatically to its new position. I can change the vibration of the boat, how much arcing it has, how much amplitude is going on. So if I need rougher seas, that is just a few slider clicks away, as well as with the vibration on this buoy back here, has a very similar control. And then I've got controls here for the school of tunas. I've got visibility for each of the extra lines coming off the fishing line. So if I only need to show three out or two, again, very quick and easy to make all these changes. Just a nice simple animation setup that allows for quick and rapid changes. Now, this is a very complex rig. So what we're gonna do is go through a simpler version of this to show our setup. So if I come here, we've got a much smaller boat. We've got a single fishing line, a single buoy, and a single fish on the line. And the fish is connected to a null. To give that null a grabbable shape, 
all I've done is I've come down here, I've changed the display color to red, and then I've changed here in the object from a dot to a rectangle, and then I've just increased the size to something that I felt I could grab onto quickly and easily in the scene. That was exactly replicated here for the buoy null. It's just created to a circle, but I can make it into an octagon or a cube or anything else that I'm gonna need to help differentiate it in the scene. And if I don't want them to be the same color, I want one to be red or one to be green, I can go ahead and make that change really quick and easy. This is just a nice way to set up simple animation controls that you can grab in the viewport without having to dig through here. Each of those nulls has a rigid body attached to it. That's so the spring animation will work, but still gives me the ability to come in and modify things and direct the animation. Now again, each of these two lines here are just a spline that's been extruded out. It, each one has three points on it. If I come over here to my vertex mode and highlight it, you'll see we've got one, two, and three points. Or if I come here to the structure, you'll see one, two, and three points. And if I wanna know which one is point zero, I just highlight it and here it is. Point one, there we go, and point two. That's gonna become important later. So it's a good idea to use your structure panel to just know the layout of your spline. Now here on the pole, I've got a null just attached to the very top of it, along with a collider body tag attached to that null. Then I've got two extra nulls here that are positioned in the middle of each spline. These ones both have a rigid body attached to them. So if I go ahead and hit play, you'll see those two nulls moving around. Now the reason they don't fall directly out of the scene right now is because I have springs set up to them. And here you can see each of those springs. And all I'm doing is connecting the top of the buoy pole here. Just drag that to there. Then the null for the middle of the buoy is directed here. Now I've got two, now I've got a spring here. I set up a second spring for here, third spring here, and a fourth spring here. Each one attached to a null that has either a rigid body or collider body attached to it. So each of these is dynamic and this gives us a totally dynamic rope rig. And this concept of creating a rope rig is common between all the different 3D apps that I've seen. You can use a spring and rigid body setup in just about any 3D application. Now, as you can see here, right now our splines are not attached to our ropes. If I wanted to create a user control to create, to control the rest length and stiffness of each of these, each of these springs, we're gonna need to use some Expresso. So what I'll do is I've got a null here just called the Animation Master, and I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm just gonna add an Expresso tag. And that's gonna open up my Expresso editor. And the first thing we wanna do is go ahead, pop in that main null. We're going to use that a little later to create some user controls. But the first thing we want to do is get these splines linked up to all of those nulls. And that's a pretty simple setup here in Expresso. So I'm going to grab my pole top null, drop it into Expresso, and I'm going to grab my first spline here, let's name this something a little more sensible. Line 01 spline, and we'll name the other one line 02, just so we'll be able to differentiate them later. Good naming conventions are gonna make this work a lot easier. So here I've got my two objects. I've got the spline object, I've got my null object. Now how do we connect these two? Well, we're gonna need an Espresso general point because we want to attach everything to the point of our spline. So right there, if we look in our structure, we're dealing with point zero on this on this spline. So what I'll do is I'll come over here, add an object to the output. Red is output, blue is input. 
And if I come down here, you'll see we have an object and we have an object here on the point. If I connect those two, now this point is touch, talking about, now this point node is talking about this point here on this spline. And what we wanna do is take a look at our point index. Remember, we're on point zero here. And right here, if we look in our attribute editor, we have point zero here. Now we can change that here to one, two, whatever we're gonna need, but right now zero is good. Now, how are we going to tell that point, which we've now defined, to follow the point of this null? We don't seem to have a point position on our inputs here. Let's click on the blue and there's point position. So I'm gonna go ahead and add point position to my inputs. And if I come over here to my outputs, I can see under coordinates, I have a global position. And if you're wondering what input and what output can be exported to each other, if you just hover over that output, over the, either the output or input dot, you'll see down here at the bottom, a little message come up. In the case of point position, we need a vector. Here in global position, we have a vector. So if I had tried to come in and say something like aspect ratio, well, that's a real. Those two things are not gonna like each other and it's not gonna do anything that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead, add my global position to the point position. And now if I come back to that pole and I rotate it, we're going to see, oh, well, we're going to see that we got something attached, but we attached the wrong spline. And that's okay. We can fix that pretty easily. So what we wanted was line two spline. So if we come over here and drag and drop on top of our original node, we can just switch it over to the other one. So now we're going to have something a little funky here, but now we can see we do have the correct point on the correct spline. And this one is still hovering way up here because its last position was that global position. This isn't going to be a problem because we're going to hook up the rest of them now. And it's going to get a new set of global positions and it'll just snap back to where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead, grab I know two spline again, I'm going to grab it twice so that I have two more of them. I'm going to copy and paste a couple more point nodes. Let's just keep these somewhat in spaces where it'll make sense. And now the next thing I want to grab is pull to buoy null. And I'm going to want to grab the buoy null itself. So there we go. Now we have all the different nodes that we're going to need. We come down, we'll create an object on each of these, and we'll grab our global position on each of these. And let's go ahead and say for the middle, we know we're going to want 0.1, and here we're going to want 2. So now as we start hooking this up, we're going to see very quickly that our entire null is now active. And if I hit play, you can see that that dynamic null is pulling the spline where we want it to go. We, it's giving it a nice little bit of flex. So let's go ahead and repeat this setup for the second half of the line. And what I can do, actually, is come in here, copy, oh, did I mess that up? This is supposed to be spline, ah, yep, I did make a mistake here. See here, it's still telling me this is yellow, telling me I've made a mistake, but I just needed to drag and drop there. So now if I grab this position null, 
I can go ahead and pull my rope around with it. So let me go ahead, go back to what I was doing. I'm gonna copy, paste this whole guy out. And there are some times when you are working Expresso that you may not want to watch exactly every interaction that's about to happen because this is about to get pretty messed up looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to line one, all of these splines. So I've got zero, one, and two here. And what's gonna happen is now my rope has completely disappeared. There's only looking like there's one rope because they're all attached to the exact same global positions. But that's not a problem. So we're gonna come back. We're gonna take this one as the buoy null as our zero. We'll grab the middle null here as our number one or middle null. And then down here, we will grab our fish null here. Now, if we come back, just like magic, our line has reappeared where we want it to be. And if I hit play, you'll see both of them now have dynamic animation happening on them. Again, no keyframes, purely dynamic. And if I come in and grab these, I can move them around. So if that buoy is vibrating here, we're gonna get all this nice natural animation right with it. So, let's get that back where it was. And let's talk about how we can update all of these together. Now in this rig, it's not gonna look as difficult because everything is fairly, everything is fairly easy in the directory. It's all right here. But if you remember back in the other rig, there were a lot of nulls upon nulls upon nulls. A lot of things were grouped in very different ways. And it just makes it easier to have all these controls in the same place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all of my springs and drop them in here. And I'm just gonna kinda of get them spread out a little bit just so I can see them easier. This just takes one second. Sometimes things can be a little tricky to grab here and there in the Espresso window. There we go. All right. So the controls we're going to want to deal with for each of these are the rest length and the stiffness. So if I come down to their inputs and I look through the object properties, I can see I have rest length and I can see I have stiffness. And we'll just repeat that. We'll go rest length and we're gonna go for stiffness. Just keep repeating this down. Rest length and stiffness. And one last time, rest length and stiffness. All right, so now we've got two inputs here and we've got a real and a real. So both of them want real numbers attached to them. So if I come to my animation control and I come down here, well, I really don't have anything that I can plug into those, but that's gonna be an easy fix because we're gonna create a user control. So I'm gonna click here on my animation master and I'm gonna come to this tab called user data and I'm gonna add user data to it. And it's gonna bring up a little window and the first one I'm gonna write is stiffness. Two Fs. Oh. There we go. So its name is now stiffness and the interface right now is just a simple percentage box, which we don't want. What do we want? We want a real. So we're gonna drop the unit down to real here. And now we can take a look at the different types of interface we can have. We can have a slider, we can have a latitude longitude if we were doing something with a vector. Uh, we can have the slider without a text box, but I think we'll just keep that here and we'll set some max, min and max for this. So we'll say the minimum is zero and the maximum is 100. And we'll just make sure that we have those all in there. So there we go. Now we're at zero and 100 and we hit OK. And let's go ahead and repeat that for a second piece of user data. 
and we're going to call this one the rest length. And again, I'm going to make the unit a real. I'm going to go ahead and say, well, this one we may want to have a longer rest length than what we currently have. So we'll just go ahead, leave it at one to a thousand and not have a minimum or maximum. We may want to have those as a very large number at some point. So we'll say, okay, again, and now if I come over to my animation control, I have a new tab here, user data, and I have my two variables here. And if I click in the Espresso window on the outputs, down at the bottom now I have user data. So I can click rest length and I can collect, click stiffness. And if I go ahead and hook these guys up to each other, we'll be able to control them all with one control now. When it's green, you know you have the connection. And it's green, it's green. And one last time, there we go. So now I've got all of those hooked up. And if I come over to my animation control, the rest length is zero, the stiffness is zero. That's probably gonna be a problem initially. So if I hit play, oh. <laughs> so let's go ahead and say the rest length is something like 50 and we'll say the stiffness is say 13. There we go. There, now we have a very taut rope and you can see it moving. So if I go ahead, I can increase that rest length and increase that stiffness a little bit till I find something that I like. There we go. Now that's starting to move a little more like I think the a tight line would move. And we're getting all this nice little snapping animation there. And if I grab my fish, I can move my fish around and no problem. So the last thing that we saw in the other example that we can add here is a vibration tag to both the boat and the fish to give them some nice natural animation. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's close up all of this. We don't need to see it all anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my boat. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add a vibrate tag. And I'm gonna go ahead and just enable rotation. And let's put in some fairly small values here, 10, 10, and 10 and an amp frequency of two. So let's go ahead and see. Well, that's very rocky. We'll drop our frequency down a bit and maybe drop down all our amplitude. There we go. Now we've just got a nice little rocking animation. Let's give ourselves some more frames to work with to watch the animation. That's looking pretty good. And I think what I'd like to do now is grab the pole and make it a child of the boat. So if I go ahead and hit play, now we're starting to see some really fun free animation that's nice, natural, easy. And we'll do the same for this fish null. So we'll grab the fish null and we'll go ahead, add a vibrate tag to that. We'll do rotation again. Now the fish, is at the end of a line, so maybe it is a little more jumpy. And maybe we want to add a little bit of position to that. Nothing too extreme. Let's see here, let's try 20. There we go. And if we wanted to add just one more here to our buoy so it feels like it's floating on top of the water, that's going to be easy to do. We'll add another vibration tag. We'll add, a vib we'll add it to the position. But here, I'm only going to want the position in Y. So and we've got a little too much position there. Let's drop that down to about a quarter. 
And let's go ahead and adjust our breast length a little bit. I think it's a little too long. Want that to be a little tighter. And let's go ahead and increase the stiffness. There we go. Now we've got a fish fighting the line, a buoy floating on the ocean, a boat floating on the ocean, and we've got zero keyframes. And if I want to come in here and try to pull on that line, I can do that. If I want that fish to really try to move it around, I can do that. And that is all thanks to dynamics and a simple espresso setup. So I think we're here at the end of our tutorial. I hope you have learned something you can use in your work. If you want to keep learning, we have more tutorials, projects, and assets for you to use in your work at pixelbump.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.